everyone is well. I have got some life in me now to be able to uh, really get stuck into these calls. Um, I think today is definitely a very important topic. Everyone coming out post show now, and some of you will be. I think there's quite a few people still doing a few shows um, coming up over the next couple of weeks, but majority of us are pretty much post show. So I think today, definitely the topics that I want to cover is post show strategy for success. I know that I've covered a lot of post show work already, but I think today's definitely the one worth talking about and worth going through a lot of points that we probably need to go through for post show strategies as well as I think right now is definitely a time that's of the essence where we all have to get it right. It's as simple as that because I always say it, you know, post show period is the period that really does set you up for a very successful off season. And the better your post show post show period is handled, the better your off season will be. And that is literally as true as it comes. And it's the same with dieting, you know, the better your post diet period is, the better your off season will be as well. Um, and the biggest, the biggest, most annoying thing for me is the, the hunger that's always there post show. It's continuous, you know, it, it just doesn't go away. But, you know, that is where you have to be more mindful and more disciplined than ever. Because for me, in my experience, I'm never really that hungry until post show. Like my food focus right now, with my calories being upped by an extra thousand on each day on training day and, and rest day, my food focus is higher now than it was in show prep because my appetite is just a lot higher. So post-show strategy for success, in my opinion, you know, you lose the immediate goal of competing, which that was the goal that's probably driven you so, for so, so long, for months on end. So immediately post-show, a lot of people lose that goal inside and they're like, hold on a minute, you know, I've finished this comp, I've got nothing else in front of me, nothing else to look forward to. And that is a dangerous place to be. That is a place where I feel like most people kind of fail and most people end up saying they either feel lost or they feel like they've got no purpose or they genuinely feel like they don't have any direction to go in. So the way I like to break things down is, again, we've all spoke about the short-term and long-term setting goals, et cetera. But again, for me, I break down short-term goals that lead up to my long-term goals. So for me, the short-term, the first immediate short-term goal post-show is always executing the post-show period to the best of my ability. And I feel like the post-show period execution of that arguably is harder than prep itself because you know that, you know, you don't have anything in front of you to chase. And arguably, if you eat something, it's okay. That's, that's the mentality that kind of people get. And don't get me wrong, it is okay to eat off plan. But today, I definitely want to talk about the strategies to implement to really be able to maximize the show period and not, you know, not cause yourself. In many cases, I've seen people put themselves in hospital. And, you know, I'm not going to mention no names, but there's, there's, there's definitely a couple of people that I've worked with in past, in previous years, and even this year, that nearly have ended up in hospital and arguably could have really ended up hurting themselves like badly. And personally... I almost ended up in hospital myself back in 2014 where, you know, I gained a ton of weight. There was that much fluid around my ankles. I, I literally I couldn't put my socks on. It was that bad. And, you know, it's not a good place to be and it's very unhealthy. And that was mainly down to losing the sense of direction and losing the sight of my short-term goal that was ahead of me. So the first thing I do when I step off stage is definitely reevaluate the situation and do a lot of thinking as to what I need to do in order to be where I need to be in terms of being competitive. And we're all in a place where we all need a lot more time. We all need a lot more improvements to be where we want to be. And that kind of, that process never ends. So for me, post-show, I always evaluate a lot. And then immediately I set my short-term goals and make them very much realistic. For me, my immediate short-term goal is to get my blood work back on point within the first seven weeks post-show and execute the recovery phase better, arguably better than I did ever before and then did the prep. That is my immediate goal. And that will be reached over the next six to eight weeks. So again, I already have, stepping off my stage, I already have a time frame in which I am working towards. Each and every single one of you, 
can set those time frames and set those goals in which you want to work towards. And that is something that I want you all to do. And that is something I want you all to add to your checking sheets as well on the front page. And that's something that I feel like should be a non-negotiable across the board. Everyone should do it because again, it's going to drive you so much more. When you have a goal set in front of you, you will always work harder. If you don't have a goal set, what are you working towards? You don't even know yourself. You know, you always need them goals and the long-term goals are accumulation of these short-term goals met. So that's the first thing to do. And, you know, the long-term goals are always based around my competitive goals and my personal and my business goals. So I don't just want you to set these short-term goals around the bodybuilding. It has to be done around your personal life and business life. Like you have to work towards these things in correlation because I always say bodybuilding and your life and business both go hand in hand. For me, I always said this and I'll say it again, the better bodybuilder I am, the better I execute as a bodybuilder on a daily basis, the better I become as a coach, the better I become in business. And overall, my life just gets better. So I definitely think that's something that, that we need to kind of enjoy. And we all need to plan ahead and we all need to get set in stone. So we've got something to work towards straight away. Um, before I move on, on to the off-plan eating, et cetera, um, does anyone want to uh, chip in or does anyone want to ask any questions or anything uh, you want me to cover based off that little uh, little intro for post-show period for success. I have just had a coffee, so if I'm going too fast, you can tell me to slow down. I feel this morning, I literally feel like I'm on fire. I'm like, yes, I've got some energy back in me. I feel alive. And to be fair, I'm only like six pounds up from a stage weight as well. And half of that is literally the introduction of, uh, of growth hormone. So I'm still pretty much uh, in stage condition. <laughs> But, but more importantly, I feel like I've got a lot of, you know, energy back. Like at the moment, I'm waking up still the same time every day, but I'm not waking up and struggling to get out of bed. I'm literally like jumping out of bed like two feet first. So I'm kind of determined to keep that up because, yeah, it's just, it's just so much better in every way. So no questions now? No, I don't have any questions, but I, just, I think it's very important the fact that you just bring light to that, you know, I find like a lot of my clients personally struggle with that. Just keeping a time frame and the timeline to like your own personal goals. So it's yeah, really so, cool to see the insight on that. Yeah. So the, the way I've broken down everything myself is my first immediate short term goal is obviously eight weeks. My long term goal is already set and that is 105 weeks away. So I know exactly what I'm doing to work towards that goal, which is 105 weeks away. And that is a long time. And that for a lot of people would be like, what the fuck is he on about? It's planning something that's 105 weeks away, but it's not really 105 weeks away because I've got eight weeks that I'm going to tick off now. That's literally going to go like this. And then after the eight weeks, I begin my off season, which is going to be a 24 week push. And that's literally going to go like this. Before I know it, I am 36 weeks down the line out of my 105 weeks towards my next goal. After them 36 weeks, I will then go into another recovery and maintenance phase, which is going to last six to eight weeks. By the time that's done, that's around 44 weeks. See that? See what I'm saying now, guys? So that's already my halfway point throughout my 105 weeks, which is my long-term goal set. So when you set these short-term goals, do you see the pattern now of how quick that will go by? Like this prep for me literally feels like a blink of an eyelid. And I know that's because of the way I structure things, the way I structure my time and the way I structure my goals and little stepping stones that work towards that prep. And then what I've also found is setting all these goals that are shorter frames I do not get overwhelmed by the size of the long-term goal and I don't get overwhelmed by how far away that long-term goal is because I'm constantly working towards something that's ticked off within, you know, within my reach. I'm constantly reaching out for something. I'm constantly reaching something that's, that's given me that satisfaction and that's given me the same kind of feel that you do when you step on stage. 
Because for me, like for all of us, it's probably the same where it's never really about the end product. It's always about the process. And if you continue to sustain that process, you know, the process, my new YouTube series, um, if you continue to sustain that process, then you always motivate, you're always working towards something and you've always got a little fire to wake up to in the morning because you know you've got your goals set that you need to achieve by that given time frame, which is a great place to be. You know, it, it's for me, like, especially this past year, I've managed to keep that kind of fire year round that you get in prep. And I feel like that's had a massive positive impact on me as a person in general, on the way I work, on the way I conduct myself, on my bodybuilding. And, and you know, it's had a correlative effect of progression across, across all bases in my life. And I feel like that's something I want to share with you all. And if it's something that, that you know, you can all implement, I think that'd be amazing because we're all going to become better people. We're all going to progress across every area in our life. And I think that's something that, that you know, is amazing, you know. Um, so, off plan eating, I know everyone's scared. Everyone's like, you know, I don't want to eat. It's literally as simple as planning ahead, guys. Like I always say, off plan eating is not your enemy. Overeating is. If you don't plan and structure these meals ahead that you're going to look forward to and, you know, eat them within a controlled basis, what's going to happen is you're not going to eat anything. You're not going to have any off plans. And then after seven to 10 days, you're going to think, fuck this, I'm going in. And that is when the damage will be done because that is when you will overeat. So right now in our improvement phase seasons, improvement phases, off seasons, whatever you want to call it, every five days or even twice a week, I want you to have an off plan meal and structure it in where you can meet your calorific goals around those days if you structure it in. And you know what? If once every two weeks or once every week even, you go and have a pizza and you're over your calorie goal. It doesn't matter. You know, as long as we're not seeing that body weight spike and go, you know, for a huge, huge lump, it's okay. And do you know what, guys? If you go into that mindset, you're never going to overeat because you know that you're going to have another off plan in a few days time or in a week's time. And it's not so far away. So when you know that you're able to have these meals and you're not restricting yourself mentally, you're going to take them with a better approach because you know that the food isn't going anywhere. And, you know, it's always good to plan these social occasions with your friends, family, and, you know, anyone that you probably missed out on and your partners, more importantly, plan things ahead. I have something to look forward to because when you've got these occasions planned, planned ahead, again, you're going to feel much happier and you're going to have a much better week because, again, you're working towards another thing that's a positive in your life, which could be an event, a social event with your family, a social event with your friends. It could be anything like that that you work towards that, that is obviously based around food and being able to socialize around people. But I think the, the worst common mistake we see with people is like you go and eat and you just, you know, have a massive banquet buffet. Like what's more enjoyable, going to a nice restaurant and enjoying, a, a, you know, a main starter and a dessert with your family and friends, enjoying the food and also enjoying that social occasion you know, something that you've missed out on for the for the past 20 weeks. I think that's more valuable in itself than eating itself. Because again, for me, it's not just always about eating. It's always, the, what I miss the most is that social thing of being able to eat with my friends and being able to eat with my family. But again, you know, you can still participate in that in prep, but it's also nice to enjoy some of the nice food. So like I said, plan ahead and make sure that you do not, you know, go too far off track and don't restrict yourself too much at the same time, I think I've made that mistake in past before post show. I tried to restrict myself way too much and mentally it just drove me down. So it's a fine balance where I absolutely got to make it a non-negotiable that each and every single one of you do plan an off plan meal at least once a week to give yourself a mental break and give yourself, you know, an occasion where you can plan things ahead with your friends and family and enjoy yourself most of all. And you know what? Sometimes if it's twice, so what? As long as you're obviously taking care of the portion control, it is okay. No damage will be done. But what is not okay is when people restrict themselves too much, saying that, you, you know, you're not supposed to be eating that. And then they go in balls deep on the cookies and muffins, sitting at home and probably doing it by themselves, which is not a great place to be. So guys, before we move on to mastering daily routine, and something that I feel like can help you all. Um, any questions? Anything you want to chip in? Anyone want to share any experiences? 
I don't mind telling everyone that it was me that nearly hospitalised himself. Oh no, it's it's not it's not you actually, but it's it's been someone else. Oh, I, was I wasn't wondering. actually talking about you, but yeah, now you've reminded me. Yeah, you, you could have ended up really badly. Yeah. And do you know what? Yeah. Do you know what? Nathan, the worst thing was as well. Nathan had like a bladder infection, and he did that on top. And I kid you not, like it, it could have been like really bad, like where he could have been, you know, in A and E. So definitely a big lesson. And this is why I always said to you guys in previous calls, like, do not have consecutive four days off if you know that you're not going to be able to control yourself. Because the amount of weight you can gain throughout eating continuously over the days is ridiculous. The worst thing is as well, guys, it doesn't just hit you the day after. Like, that food will sit there and digest for a number of days. So your body weight will continue going up and up and up and up until the point where your body just cannot handle it. And I kid you not, I, I literally have seen people like damage their kidneys, like and, and with, with the damage that is not repairable through doing that as well. This is why, you know, I mentioned it so many times on calls. And this is why it was so important for me, for every single one of you to have that plan to reverse out of the diet straight away or even a week before your show, because it's so important to just get back on plan. And if you want to eat something on top, please do so. But eat all your meals first. Nathan went to Body Power, one well, Body Power Arnold's, with no food clearly, and he just ate and ate and ate, and you know what? It could have ended up like in a real bad way, and he and I think he almost did as well. Ankles swelled up, just exactly as you said. Everything I thought I had COVID. I went for a PC, is it PCR PCR test? So I really felt that bad. I thought I was gonna die. Che- cheeseburger COVID, mate. But yeah, tw- I gained twenty one pound in three days. And it was seeing you lot. It was it was Jem's fault. It was Marnie's fault. Seeing you lot on stage, it just depressed me that I couldn't be up there. So I just got depressed and ate pizza and several samples of shit protein bars, which wasn't worth it. What was that about? Did you did you enjoy it though? After like literally after the first I meal, I hated it. I hated it. The only one meal I enjoyed was that one I took on my Instagram, the one at Medicine Bakery, because that was the first breakfast diet. That was lovely. But yeah. after that, it was just like. I couldn't stop, but I hated it. It wasn't even enjoyable. Oh, horrible. Oh, I by the way, guys, the aftermath was Birmingham, good. Medicine Bakery, Birmingham, Go. by far the best place I've ever been to. Wow. Just Unbelievable. Once. Unbelievable. Just once. <laughs> yeah. I, I did I did do an Nathan though. I was literally up like a pound the day after. <laughs> I am down 16 pounds though as of today. Yeah, so still a few off. still a few more pounds to go, mate. Four off. <laughs> Almost got the abs back. You know what though, guys? Like the most important thing is, is I've been doing it a long time. I've been doing it since the age of 16. And for the first five, six years, do you know what? Probably for the first six years of competing, I always struggle with post-show period just through lack of direction and lack of guidance. So, you know we all make these mistakes and it's okay to do them. Like, I'm not going to be a, like Nathan. Was I being a dick with you? I wasn't. And Nathan was expecting oh, no. me to be a dick. Like no, scared. people forget, like I'm here to support you. Like if you make a mistake, we're here to work through it. I'm not here to be a dick with you. Like, I'm here to help you. And I think that's where a lot of people really forget, you know, I'm here to help. I'm not here to judge because everything, every single mistake in the sun that you've done or will do or have done in past, I will have done myself. So I would never judge anyone for doing what Nathan's done because I've done it myself, you know? So that, that's the most important thing that, that we all need to kind of remember when it, when it comes to stuff like this. So, and I think Holly will be able to chip in on this one on the next subject, and that's mastering your daily routine. So the biggest thing that I've noticed for myself, again, my routine was great the past year, but it's even better now. Because I've been able to find a schedule, a working schedule that I find I'm the most productive at and I find my brain function is the best. So for me, that kind of schedule, it's from 5 a.m. up until half past 10, 11 a.m. That work block of six hours is when my brain function and my capacity to actually work and make the best decisions and break things down the most efficiently is the best. Like that is my time when I know I can perform the best mentally. And I definitely feel like all of us, majority of you guys being coaches, being self-employed, I definitely feel like all of us can find our own individual routine where you will be the most productive for one 
and two, where your quality of your work will be the best. Because again, it's super important for all of us to make sure that the quality of our work remains. And to do that, I believe you have to find your own individual routine at which you know you can work the most. Like throughout that time, when I wake up early, like the focus I can get and the way I can break things down, it is not comparable to what I can do in the evening. And I used to work in the evening thinking I was the most productive in the evening. That is not true. I was just being lazy back in the day. That is all it was. Like right now, when I wake up at that time, especially because I don't actually have my meal one up until like seven o'clock. So I normally wake up at quarter past four uh, and that's pretty much been the same old prep. And right now it's like, even though my food's back in, I'm still even waking up earlier now. But that is where, you know, and I'm not telling you all to wake up that early. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying find your own individual routine in which you will feel the best, be able to sleep the best and work the best. So more on that kind of schedule. When I wake up at that time, I feel like my focus is totally different. Like I don't need caffeine to focus. So my first block of my work, I even do it without caffeine. And then when I do have a shot of coffee, I literally feel like I've had a modafinil. I feel like I've had something that like, literally I feel like that guy, what's, what was that film now? Uh, Limitless. That's literally how I feel, like the guy off Limitless. Because the way I can process things is just totally different. And the way I can work is totally different. Like the ideas I get and the things that I can break down, it's just on another level. So I definitely feel like, part of mastering your daily routine is recognizing at which you know you can work the best because I've seen so many people and you know what I used to do it myself is I'd work at random times you know being self-employed you know you'd put things off and work at all different times different hours and I feel like that was the biggest mistake I ever made in past because it, it literally held me back so much right now each and every single day looks the same and within my days I know when I can perform the best and give back the best towards my work, towards my training. So every single day is structured around that. Obviously, not all of us have the same luxury with having different jobs. But even when you have a normal day job and a job that requires certain working hours, you can still pinpoint your best individual routine at which will suit you the most. And the most important thing with that is making sure that each and every single day looks the same. I know it's boring going to bed at the same time every day and waking up at the same time every day, but it it literally is a total game changer for your recovery, for your productivity and avoiding stress. So having the same wake up time and bedtime, bedtime each and every single day will ensure that you all get the best adequate sleep and the best recovery and that will lead to productivity. And again, we all want to be quite as productive as we possibly can. So one thing that I've realized and I've learned the hard way, you know, when I got to pretty much the the stepping stone in, in what I do is I've recognized that if I want to be the best version of myself, my routine needs to change and I need to literally find where my weaknesses are and where I could be doing better. And that is the point where I was very honest with myself. And that was the point where I sorted my shit out and basically started, you know, getting up at a sensible time and structuring my days. So right now, I definitely think that routine and structure is definitely key to success, not just in bodybuilding, but in life in general. I definitely feel like uh, Don, Don can give you the best example. Ever since I've grilled him so much about his routine, like his business has gone through the roof. His productivity has, everything's improved. And so has his physique. So it's got a snowball effect of constant progression. Because again, when you look at a pattern with the most successful people in the world, their days are literally the same by the minute and their routines are literally bulletproof. And that is something that I definitely feel like has a massive carryover in life and and business. So where possible, please make sure that each and every single day looks the same or as close as possible. And obviously it's got to be different for all of us. I'm not telling you all to be, you know, as rigid as I am, for example, or others, but we can all be honest with ourselves, and we can all agree that we can probably improve in certain areas of our routine and structure that will lead to more progress, will lead to more productivity. And inevitably, it will reduce fatigue. It will allow you to obviously get better sleep. So I definitely think that, you know, where possible, definitely keep your days the same. It will help with the reducing the food focus because you're not going to be as bored. It'll help with so many variables within this game. So I think even if you do work a full-time job, 
you can still create a routine that will allow you to keep the days as rigid and structured as possible. And again, I definitely feel like that will reduce a lot of stress. Like I used to be stressed to death because I used to feel like I was chasing my tail constantly because I didn't have my working blocks. I didn't have my structured days. Whereas right now, every single day is structured to the minute. I know exactly what I'm doing every single day. And you know what? You know, I know it may not be possible for all of you, but you can all kind of get the same structure at your own individual level where you know exactly what you're doing at certain times, whether it's meal prep, whether it's your chores, whether it's your little work that you're doing, a side hustle or your day job or your training, you can all set a structure and routine across your week and plan your week ahead where you know exactly what your schedule is. And that will actually avoid so much stress. And that will lead to so much more productivity, in my opinion, because look, I've done it myself. Like on these calls, I try and share as much experience, as much real experience as I can with you all. And, and that's definitely been something that, that, you know, correlates to the post-show strategy for success as well, because the daily routine and mastering your daily routine is something that I love to hold on the pedestal because I feel like that's been key to my success and my progress in bodybuilding and my progress in business in general as well. Um, so I'll kind of end it on that bombshell. Questions, Q and A. Let's get them. Let's get them, guys. I've been I've actually been talking nonstop for like twenty seven minutes. So I think it's time for you guys to talk because I'm actually wet through underneath this. Like I'm sweating. I feel like I've had a shower. I'm not even kidding. And I definitely think that I probably need to reduce my caffeine intake now. I've got my energy back because uh, this morning I'm not sure if you all probably recognise, but yeah, I feel like I'm like. What else can I do? It's a good place to be, though. I, I intend on keeping that up. Okay. Uh, I think um, probably six months or so ago now, you said about uh, posing on a more regular basis, not just when you're coming up to a competition. So is that built into your like daily or every other daily or something similar routine, even now, straight after your show? Non-negotiable, mate. Every single day, I pose. I do a full round of posing, every single pose, and I hold it for 10 seconds. I do my pictures on Wednesdays and Sundays. Um, I, I check in with myself on every Sunday and I pose every single day. 10 seconds holds every single pose, every single day. That's part of my morning routine. So as soon as I wake up, I go to the toilet, I have my morning sups, I go downstairs, um, I go in my garage. I've got like a little garage set up. I do a round of posing and then I pretty much spend the first 30 minutes of my day, 30 to 40 minutes of my day, I put a podcast on. And then I pretty much get mine and Meg's food ready for the day, portion it all out, put it all in container, well, put it on all plates, put it all in fridge. Once I've done that, I start my first block of work, um, which is pretty much an hour of work. By, the, by that time, I think it hits like 6 a.m. By that time, I do my 20 minutes walk. As soon as I get back from a walk, I have my first shot of coffee and then I get stuck back into work. And then half past seven, I'm a meal one. That's pretty much how every single morning looks right now. Thanks. Cuba, I think um, <clears throat> what's important as well for people to consider in their routines, not just about the food and uh, work as well, is, you know, planning for like the unexpected, like that stress level when you eat and you go off plan, like as soon as you finish the prep, it can be the same thing with routine. If you go off routine and you start stressing out. So I think what's important, for example, I'm a CEO of a company. Sometimes I have to get up at three o'clock in the morning and take a call. Um, I'm a father and I'm a husband. So what I like to do is I plan in my structure time with my daughter and time with my wife. And then sometimes my daughter's not well at school. She's got a temperature. I have to go and pick her up. Well, you know, it's just, that's part of what happens in a week. So what the way that I've worked it with my wife, just to give some feedback, is that when I'm dieting, I was really strict with my routine and she, and, and kind of, you know, and my wife kind of stepped up in those little areas. But now kind of reversing out, I'm trying to give back more to my family to kind of build, build up those brownie points for when I'm 20 weeks out. 
and then she can, you know, so, you know, having that adaptability and flexibility in your routine, you should plan for being flexible in your routine so you don't get stressed. Yeah. I think another thing that, that that's worth mentioning here, mate, is it's teamwork with your wife as well. Yeah. Which is very much like myself and Meg. Like, and I think that's something that, that will make your relationship better, um, especially knowing what tasks you have to do and what tasks your partners do, your partners do. So myself and Meg, throughout the day, we both have our own individual things that we do for each other. Yeah. So she basically gets like the raw food ready and I cook it all. So, you know, it's, it makes both our lives much easier because I do the tasks that I'm good at and I'm efficient with. And she does the tasks that she's good at and she's efficient with. So it makes our day super, super smooth and super efficient. And again, takes a lot of stress from us and our relationship because we both stick to our strengths and what we are both individually good at and get those done. And that, and that's part of our non-negotiable as well. So, you know, we've got like a, a list on, on my whiteboard of my, you know, non-negotiables that I do every single day. And it's all part of that. So I definitely think that that's the biggest thing that I got from Mark Coles as well is having a non-negotiable list. Mm. And I think every single person, whether the bodybuilder or not, should have that. Absolutely. Because again, if you stick to the non-negotiables that you've set, which I have done, like they all lead to some amazing, amazing success. Like on every single day, I feel like by the time I get to end of my day, I feel like I've accomplished something. And I feel like I've ticked off all these little goals, stepping stones that are working towards my short-term goals. So like even every single day right now, it feels like I've accomplished something and done something positive and done something that's brought me forward towards my goals. So basically I go to, I go out, I go to bed every single day and I'm winning. And I think that's a great place to be mentally because the, the, the reason why mentally I used to feel down back in the day is I had no sense of accomplishment on a daily basis. Right now I do because I've got these little things that I stick to. And once they're all adhered to by the end of the day, I'm like, yeah, you know, I've made it. Now, six days out of seven, that might be possible. Well, how do you get your, your day back on track if, for example, something comes up that you didn't account for? Yeah. You just crack on, mate. You've got to get it done. So something comes up, you get it done, and then resume your day to the best of your ability. That's all you do. So, you know, we, we've all got lives, like not every single day is perfect. And I think one thing we all have to remember is we all get 365 days a year. If 10 or 15 of those days aren't perfect, so what? It's still 90% of the time you've been on point. It's the same thing as thinking about an off-plan meal. You've got all these meals. You've got six meals a day across seven days a week. If one or two meals... I'm not perfect. Again, that is okay because that does not dismiss all these other meals that have been perfect. Does that make sense? So if something comes up out of your day, all you do, mate, don't stress about it because you know tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow you can resume back to your normal routine and everything's going to be perfect. So on that day, just do your best and do what you can and work around it. Because at the end of the day, not every day, not every single day is going to be perfect. We all get the days where something's happened or an emergency happened at the gym and I've got to break off or do whatever needs to be done because shit does happen quite literally. Can I chime in? Absolutely. I was waiting. I was waiting. <laughs> I was waiting. Do you know what? I'm actually going to record this one and I'm actually going to put, put this one on YouTube because I think a lot of people are going to really benefit from this conversation. So Holly, it's your time. Let's go. You can tell me to shut up because I can literally talk about organization for hours listen but, um, i've been waiting for this so no let's go <laughs> so um i've worked as a pa for quite a long time so i've worked with quite a lot of people who have got very different routines and different ways of doing things and everyone is different so like cuba says he wakes up in the morning at half four five o'clock i can tell you i'm never ever going to do that because i don't like mornings so I won't ever get up before 6am 
but everyone's got different productive times and some people that will be the evening some people that will be like 10 till 12 etc so you've got to find out what works for you I used to work for a guy that used to wake up at 4am and be emailing me until like 10am and then he'd go quiet and that was just his productive time whereas I work with other people it'd be like till midnight 1am let me just uh do you know what, Holly? That's a great point because I've recognised that past a certain point in the day, especially after I trained, like my brain function just isn't there. I think that's the thing with prep. You've got to figure out when you've got... So there's different types of energy. So, for example, I, my brain power is always there in the morning. Yeah. Whereas I would do... So I would do anything that requires concentration first thing in the morning. I know by 2 p.m. that my brain's fucked and that I'm no use to anyone. <laughs> but at that point, I can do stuff like steps yeah. or like stuff that doesn't require concentration. So there'll be areas of your day that I don't know, like say work-wise that you can do that don't require any concentration whatsoever. Like training's a different kind of energy. So that might be the fact that you need to do that at a certain time so there are a particular in prep you can kind of work it I don't have days that look the same ever so my bedtime and my wake up time will be the same the activities in the day will never be the same so what I'll do on a Sunday night is I I do what's called time blocking so I will have the tasks I need to do for the week that I'll put in blocks I will allow flexibility in that so I'm not blocking my time hour to hour back to back because like you say if something slips you've then got the stress of oh I've or something runs over for example the other really good thing there is that you can take blocks out and you can move them elsewhere so if you think oh I haven't done that task today which let's face it happens quite regularly for me I will just move it to somewhere else. Um, the other thing that I have to do is I have to leave gaps where I don't have anything in there because I know I will block otherwise from 6 a.m. to like 10 p.m. and I won't switch off. So like from 7 p.m. onwards for me is free. So again, if something comes up and I really have to, I could push something down towards the end of the day. So that's quite a good way of doing it. I've got like a little whiteboard that I do that in, but you can do it in your phone. I've done it before that it's like little reminders and stuff. So you can move stuff around and you can see where you've got free time, etc. cetera. Um, what else is there? I I've got to say like, I actually had a conversation with Holly about this. And ever since I started implementing that, like the, the way I work and everything else has just totally leveled up because I'm not trying to do the tasks that need my brain power at the times I know where I'm going to get it wrong or I'm not going to be as efficient or as good. And honestly, like, everything Holly's just said there has been so invaluable towards me being better at executing my days. Like the difference this has made is unreal. And I know it's, you know, it, it might not be realistic for others, but I've managed to sort my own schedule at which suits me the most for my work, my training, my personal life, and everything has its place now. So everything Holly's just said there has been so invaluable. And, and on us, I've, ever since I've implemented it as well, it's it's just been incredible the way I feel on a daily basis as well. So big up Holly. I think for me as well, like if I think about everything that I've got to do, I feel incredibly overwhelmed and I won't get anything done because I'll just procrastinate on the fact that I've got so much to do and that when, when the hell am I going to do this all? So like what I do is I'll brain dump it all on a bit of paper and it might be like two pages worth of tasks and then you can like time block it or you can go, right, today I'm going to get these five done. These are the top five things that are my priorities that need to be done now everything else can wait and that's kind of how I do it so I have something that I can tick off and then you get that feeling of accomplishment of ticking it off and also you don't have the overwhelm of oh my god I've got 20 things to do when the hell am I going to do them I need to do them all now and then I just run around like headless chicken all day so yeah 
That's could, my do you know what? We, we spoke about this, but like feeling overwhelmed, haven't we? Yeah. And do you know, since I've started implementing what I'm doing now, not once did I feel overwhelmed and not once did I feel like I couldn't complete my tasks of the day. Like in past, I used to try and work through the night and do all these things that I know necessarily do not need doing at that time. But, you know, I've, I feel like I'd be obliged to do them. But now I've realized that, look, like it's all about quality, like quality of your work matters. So stick to your schedule. And like what, what Holly said there is just, it, it's, it's transformed the way I'm able to, to just do shit. So it's, um, it's definitely something worth noting for sure, guys. I, um, I, I think there's also, um, I think there's also research to suggest that the, the actual act of pipelining the items that you have to do and taking them out of your email or out of your head or something you need to get to actually in itself helps to fulfill the idea that you have accomplished something towards that task. So it stops yeah. it from all building up. It's kind of like archiving. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point, mate. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There is actually something you can look at, which um, is like, it will tell you what it's, it's to do with your optimal bed and wake time, but it kind of also tells you when you're your most productive. I think it's called chronotype yeah. and we all change. So if you think like when you're a child, for example, you wake up really early. When you're a teenager, you might sleep until lunchtime. As you get a bit older, your bedtimes creep earlier. So the way you work and your productive times do change as well. So don't pigeonhole yourself into the fact that I am a morning person because it can change. Are you trying to tell me I'm growing up? <laughs> yeah, you're getting old. <laughs> old Holly's before your time. Holly's basically told me at 27 now I'm basically <laughs> only just starting to grow up. Yeah, cheers, Holly. I appreciate that one. I'll get back in my box now. <laughs> you know what, though? It make, it all makes sense. It all really does make sense because, I, I, yeah, it, it really does. It's been a, it's been very eye-opening the past probably two years just whilst everything's been growing and I've been implementing all these things, it's definitely been very, very eye-opening as to what I can do, what I'm capable of doing and how well I can do it if I'm, if I'm rigid and structured within my days. It's, uh, it's, it's a total game-changer. This isn't me saying I'm productive all the time and it always goes to plan either because... You do your best though, you do your best. That's what it's all about. We, we all have shockers. Yeah, we all have bad days. Q&A guys, let's get a couple of questions in. Um, I, by the way, does anyone have any objections to me putting this episode on YouTube but at all? You all good? I had to ask no, the question fine. before I do it, Yeah. <laughs> No, I think anything that everybody's talked about so far is very really valuable to any sort of person. If it's not fitness related, if you could relate to business, your relationships, anything, and it's just going to provide more success across the whole board, right? Yeah. Do you know what? It's it 100% agree because since I've actually done this, it's improved my relationship because I'm making more time for Meg, whereas before – because I used to, I didn't used to have a working block. I used to just work every day, all day. And I didn't have my set times for everything. Like now within my day, I have set time for me and Meg time. And when it's me and Meg time from certain hours in the evening, like I don't even, I don't touch my phone. I don't touch my laptop. It's just time for me and Meg. And that's something that she hasn't had probably for the past two, three years. But not only that, it's because it's having a positive impact on my relationship. Again, that's making me more productive in itself because I'm waking up in the morning and I'm like, I'm ready to get after it. I'm ready to work. Like I've had a great evening. I've had a great day. So it's like, like I said, I'm winning every single day across all areas. And I think it's mega important not to sacrifice your relationships, not to sacrifice all the things that are important, like Zach's got with his baby with him now. Um, it's mega important to, to make sure that you don't just put emphasis into your bodybuilding, which for me, that was a mistake in past. Um, you don't just put in the emphasis into your business. Again, massive mistake I made in the past when I tried to work too much. I think the quality of my work definitely decreased and the quality 
of my life decreased and that resulted in me not being as productive. So I think all these points can definitely have a massive carryover into, you know, your relationship, your personal life, your business, your bodybuilding. So we're not just covering points that are going to benefit you as a bodybuilder. I think we're covering points that are going to benefit you as a person because I can honestly hand on heart say, since I've observed all these things, I've legit become a better person all around. So, you know, I'm definitely more pleasant to be around um, with, with my close ones. So, and I think that's a massive win itself. And, and, you know, and I definitely feel like my productivity has gone through the roof as well. So, yeah, life is good, guys. Life is good. I don't know how much you're going to edit this, but if, if you're not going to edit it that much, then... To I'm not going to edit... Off... Mate, I'm not editing a single thing. It's going up raw. Okay. Then to head off one of the likely comments then in your comment section, can you yeah. state explicitly what your 105-week goal is? Say again. What's your 105-week goal? Oh, it's uh, August 2023. Um... 2023 pro show in August. But that long-term goal isn't just the pro show. That long-term goal is stepping back on stage with a certain amount of improvements and obviously step, step, stepping back on stage itself. And that long-term goal also has a lot of different goals that are based around business and my personal life as well. But I'm not going to share those because, you know, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna spill the secret of it. Yes, it is a bodybuilding show, the the one that I'm gonna you know make a comeback with after my off season. Um, but there is you know a number of all these long term goals that I am gonna hit alongside of that as well. Um, and I think people ask that why 105 weeks because I believe that if you want to make a dramatic change to your physique and you want to be competitive, whether you're here or here you need the time away from stage and you need to take time in your off season. And like I broke down my goals earlier, think about it, guys. Taking six months off, that's barely doing a recovery phase. So if you really want to make a, a difference to your physique and progress and bring a package that, you know, will make judges say, Jesus Christ, like he's changed, um, you, you need time away from stage and it's even more important as females as well um, to, to be able to do that. And I think many people struggle, struggle to take time away from stage through inability to set these goals and work towards them as well. And when you think about it, guys, like it, the way I've broken down that 105 weeks, trust me, it's going to go like this. Well, probably some of us are going to be sat here in, in 105 weeks talking about this and probably be able to remember the, this conversation and be like, do you know what? You said it and we're here now. And it, it literally has been blinking on an eyelid. And I think that taking that time away from stage, I think it comes into like a psychological factor with some people. Like they get so afraid of progressing and putting a little bit of additional body fat on that. It's just like, oh, I always have to look good. But like you might look good, but you're bringing the same shit to the stage every time. Yeah. You're not improving one bit, you know? We all compete to win, and I'm never going to step back on stage and get third call out ever again. You know, I, I beat some decent guys. You know, I, I, the biggest win for me from this show and the biggest reflection I had is in 12 months, which meant that I had, what, eight months of off-season, I managed to come back on stage with 10 pounds of muscle and in better condition. But, you know, I need to repeat that and some more. Like, realistically, I need another 12 pounds of muscle tissue and better condition again to be able to get in that, in that first call out. And that's exactly what I need to do. And to do that, I've broken down what I need to do. And that is a long off season. So I think if we're all real with self and, you know, I'm my own biggest critic, critic, you know, I need, I need that time to be able to bring what I want to the stage and never ever be out of that first call out ever again. Is that something we could discuss and put in the check-in. Absolutely. Um, you know, about, about about having the conversation with you about realistic time frames. Because yeah. for me, I don't want to push to compete unless I am ready, ready. Yeah. So if that's an extra six months or an extra 12 months on top of what I had in my head, then I'd well, rather get the 100-week plan yeah. in place well, listen, as opposed to thinking otherwise. Well, listen, this is why I have short-term goals. When you hit them short-term goals off, 
we can then reassess at each point of that shorter term goal to see if you're ready or not. So yeah. we, could, we could have a, a time frame, uh, you know, a smaller long term goal at which we reassess if you're ready to prep or not. That's a good idea. Great. Do you understand what I mean now? Yeah. Yeah. And that way, again, you're breaking things down into even smaller little steps. Yeah. Perfect. We all happy? Scarlett, we need your permission. Are you okay going on YouTube? Yeah. 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 She's like, yeah. <laughs> right, guys. Thank you so much for today. I definitely enjoyed today's call. Please let me know if there's any topics you want to you want me to discuss next week. Um, I hope you all smash your weeks and we will all be talking on checking days and talking through the week anyway, as most of you I'm still talking to every day. So all good. Happy days. Um, guys, really appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care. Love you all and leave you. Bye-bye.